Hey guys, George here. And in this workshop installment, we're going to wire these two speakers up in parallel, and we're gonna show you how to do that from the ground up. So first thing, of course, we've got two of our small mini cube speakers. This is part number 810154. We've got some purple wire pre-cut into small sections, but we're gonna make some adjustments to the lengths of that. We're gonna use a simple pair of small tweezers. These things are one of my go-to tools because I can reach into tight, tight places where my big fat fingers can't reach into. So these are quickly becoming one of my most common used tools. And we're gonna use some wire strippers, um, just as ones that go down to some small scale wire. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn on our soldering iron. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on. And while we're doing that, we're gonna open these packages up. We're gonna get the speakers out. So on this one, I just simply take a cut on the side and let the speaker come out. Now you're gonna notice there's a rubber band around there and that's there to help keep the speaker in the enclosure. Um, the speaker is not actually glued in place. It's actually just a press fit or a snap fit. So you can, uh, put some small uh, small drop or two of liquid plastic cement just here around the edge um, So that that way you can get that uh, speaker glued in place um, So we're gonna go ahead and do that um, I Personally like 10x 7r apparently it's getting harder and harder to get So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do when my supply runs out But I'm also going to use one of these touch and flow applicators now, if you've ever seen one of these things, it's basically a glass uh, tube with a very fine needle point on the end. And that allows me to put the glue exactly where I want it. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly angle it down. You're going to see a little drip forming on the end. And then you can just take it and simply touch it to a couple of corners. Now that speaker is secured in place. We're going to do the same thing on the other one. Just going to put a couple of drops of the of the uh, cement on the corners, just like that. Now that speaker is secured in in place, so now we can set that aside. So to prep this, now of course we're going to want to tin the ends of our wires. So we're going to grab our wires. We're going to grab our wire strippers. And we're going to trim off just about, about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of the end of the wire. And then we're going to gently twist this so that all the any frayed ends are nice and uh, connected and, and tightly wrapped. Now we're going to take our uh, flux. Now you want to make sure you're using flux designed for work with electronics. This is one I picked up at uh, DigiKey. It's called Chip Quick. Uh, runs about $11, $12 for a tube like this and a small syringe. We can put a small dab on the end of the wire, just like this. There we go. And then we're going to take our solder, and we're just using some really fine solder. This is just a ball of some extra stuff that I had laying around. I'm going to take the solder. We're going to put a little bit of solder on the end. First, we need to clean the tip of the iron. There we go. Now we're going to put a little ball on the end of the soldering iron and then we're just simply going to touch it to the wire and that flux will draw the solder off the end of the wire end of the iron and into the wire and makes a nice clean joint. Now you're going to see that we have a fairly large section here but we don't have a big solder pad so we can actually trim off the excess there and get a nice small little solder uh, tinned end there that we're going to use for soldering. Now we're going to do this to our other wires because we want to go ahead and get all our wires prepped. So we're going to go ahead and do the next one. You can see how quick this will flow once you get the hang of it and know what you're doing. Now we're simply going to touch the end of that. Now there's our two wires that are going to go all the way back to the decoder. 
Now, we, because we're wiring these in series, we need a short wire that's going to jump between the two. So we're going to start off with this piece of wire. We're going to solder and tin the one end of this wire, just like we had been. Now, depending on how far apart you're going to have these wires is going to dictate how long this middle wire is going to be. In this case, on this particular model, they're not going to be very far away. So I'm just going to cut a piece about an inch, inch or so long, inch and a half long. So now I can take that and throw that back into my scrap wire bin. Now we're going to go ahead and strip and tin the other end of this wire, just like we have been. There we go. And we're going to shorten that end. So now you see we have this small piece of wire in here. I'll hold it with the tweezers. We have this small piece of wire here that we're going to use to jumper between the two. Now that we've got our wires prepped, now comes the fun part. Now we're going to actually solder to the speakers themselves. And to do that, one of the biggest trouble uh, parts of this is the soldering iron is made of metal. Well, the back of these speakers are a big giant magnet. And so what happens if you just lay the speaker onto the table like that, and I've had it happen to me before, the speaker magnet can be attracted to the tip of the iron. Now you've got this magnet attached to the end of the iron, and it's heating up, and you can potentially damage your speaker. So one thing I recommend doing is grabbing an extra set of pliers, or in this case, side cutters, or something like that. And what we'll do is we'll just rest the, the handle on the speaker itself and that way it prevents it from jumping up it helps hold it down now we're going to take our flux and we're going to put it on the corners right here so that that way we know where our wire is going to join now when we're doing these in series we want to make sure that our speakers are daisy chained so we're going to go from the decoder to this terminal we're going to go from the second terminal to the first terminal on the second speaker, and then we're gonna go from the second terminal back to the decoder. Now, a lot of people will get fixated on polarity. Ultimately, polarity doesn't matter, but if you do wanna follow polarity, there's a card that comes with the decoder that will identify your plus and minus, so that that way you can be consistent and make sure that you wire your decoder properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and solder these wires. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm doing these, is I like to do this and hold the wire with my tweezers to make sure that I get a precise fit. Now I'm gonna put a little solder on the end. Now remember, I've already attached the flux, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna line it up where it needs to be, we're gonna put the solder on it, and there you go. And now that solder joint is made. You can see one of the biggest things you don't you want to be careful is you want to make sure that you don't have the solder bridge over to the back of this magnet because then you can run and buy basically short if you do that where the metal on the solder is touching the magnet and the metal on the solder on this one is touching the magnet. You basically will short damage your amplifier. So you want to take time to make sure you're not doing that. All right, so now we're going to take our small piece and we're going to bend the wire, grab our tweezers, and now we're going to grab our soldering iron. We're going to put a little solder on the end of it, and we're going to do this to the other side. And there you go. Now this speaker is done. And you can see we've got our speaker connections and you're going to see that the solder doesn't touch the back of this magnet across the, across the speaker here. So now we're going to start with our next speaker. So since this one's done, we don't need to have the, the uh, handle on it anymore to keep it weighted down. But we just need to be careful when we're doing it. So 
let's put our flux onto the speaker terminals here. Just like that. Now we're going to get our solder, our soldering iron. Grab our wire here. We're going to place it where we want it. And just like that. Okay. Now we're going to do the last one. And now we've got our last piece of wire. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically just bending the end of the wire so that you get a little bit of an L shape. Um, this isn't met mandatory because if you're soldering it from this end and then ultimately it really doesn't matter. I just like doing that because then the wire is not extending beyond the scope of the speaker. So if I'm close to the edge of the shell or something like that, then I don't have to worry about it uh, having to be bent or potentially damage the uh, solder joint by bending it afterward. So we're going to do the same thing. We've got a little solder on the end of our iron. We're going to hold our wire in place. Going to touch it and there we go now our speakers are soldered in series and you can see how the wire goes from the one to the other and then back to the decoder so when you're getting ready to install this now that the speaker is glued in place you can remove these little rubber bands and now you can mount this inside your model so once you've got your speakers connected in series, now if you wanted to install four speakers, now this is where you would take two pairs and parallel the pairs. So you get two sets of speakers that are wired up in series just like this. And then you can take this, make sure you match the side of the speaker though, because if you don't, then you could have your two sets of speakers running opposite each other and that wouldn't be any good. So in this case, we're going to take the same polarity of the speaker, wire it together, and on the other side, we're going to take the same polarity of the speaker, and now you can see how we've got four speakers wired up together. Now, when you do this, these four speakers are going to give you an incredible amount of low end frequency because now the four speakers are working together to recreate that low end, and now you're really going to be able to hear it outside of that model. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you. Now, for more tips and assistance, feel free to reach out to us at support at soundtracks.com and be sure to like and subscribe this video if you want more tips like this. Thank you.